Right, I am very excited because I have with me now a sneak peek of a rather fabulous story uh, by Lucy Edmonton, which is actually me. This is just the first three chapters of the novel Summerland, and I haven't actually seen it in print yet. I've only seen it scrolling away on the computer and in my frantic typewritten and handwritten notes. I'm just going to open it up and start right in the middle, actually. And you're to imagine it's actually not a beautiful sunny day as it is today in London. It is pickling it down with rain. And you've arrived in England. It's your first time off the continent, first time in England. You know nobody. And you've arrived in Dover. You're coming up to the customs house and you're a refugee. Now, this isn't modern times. This is 1946. So it's just after the end of the Second World War. And you are traveling with a group who are being brought to England to safety, we hope. What from? Well, I'm not going to tell you that yet. You're traveling with the Red Cross, and so far you've barely spoken a word in the customs house. The crowd shuffled forward closer to the men in uniforms with shining buttons. Uniforms meant trouble, questions. My heart was racing so fast, every beat blurred into one continuous throb. I looked down at my hands, now fingering a tricky bit of Beethoven on the wool of my skirt. I can't do this. I have to do this. One by one, the officials crooked a finger for someone to step up and show their papers. My turn. Do what everyone else does. A customs man behind a big wooden desk looked me up and down. What did he see? A dark-haired girl in a red-checked coat. Brown cardigan, brown skirt, brown socks, brown shoes. It was a smart coat, at least, though it had been through a lot. All my clothes were cast-offs, a bit like me. Name? I was paralysed, unable to speak. She's Bridget Eagle, said Betty from the Red Cross, looming over my shoulder. The man scanned my creased identi identity papers. From Germany? I shook my head and mouthed, Austria, Vienna. Says here you trained as a seamstress. What should I reply to that? The customs man frowned at Betty. Here, you, miss, ask her if she's a seamstress. Like I know, Betty spluttered. My job's just to fetch him in. I barely know how to say parley vu in school, let alone German. She turned to me and did a pantomime of sewing. I nodded. Coming to England to work, continued the customs man. Another nod. Anything to declare? I handed over my brown cardboard case, given to me at the Red Cross Refuge Centre in Berlin. The customs man clicked the lid and opened it. It didn't take long for him to work through all that I owned in the world. One nightshirt, one spare set of underwear, one small book with tiny, tiny writing. And most precious of all, one grey glove, just the one. Anything else? I shrank away. They wouldn't do a body search, would they? That would be disastrous. Then I remembered my uneaten fish paste sandwich given to me by a Red Cross. Wordlessly, I pulled it out of my pocket and handed it over. The customs man took one sniff at the fish paste and shook the whole sandwich back at me. Uh, move along now, nothing to declare. I moved along, head down, eyes down. Eventually, I allowed myself a quiet smile. Nothing to declare, the man had said. Well, we all have our secrets. No one needed to know about the knife in my sock.